before we start the service, we go to the Lord in prayer. Is there any that we need to add other than Tom and Tammy? Is there any others that we need to add to the prayer list? If not, um, then let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us all that you've given unto us and all that you give us as part of family. We also thank you, Lord, for your son because without him, we would not be saved. And we appreciate that all that you've done for us. Believing what he has done on the cross gives us his righteousness that we may spend eternity with you. And as we go through the week, Lord, just take care of the families of Tom and Barb and take care of the family here. Give us what we need and take um, just take care of us through the week. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Is this working? Is that better? Okay. Um, announcements. Is there any announcements? As we said um, earlier, um, the funeral will be here once, um, and we don't know for sure. It will be on a Saturday. So um, whether it be next Saturday or the following, it will be just so everybody has opportunity. Any other announcements? Anything I've forgotten? Um, again, the church is and is very and was very important to Tom. So that is my mission to for him to keep it going. So if there's no other announcements, we'll move on to today's message. <clears throat> and as we were talking Sunday there, um, I was talking with Tom, and he said, you know, I enjoyed it so much. John is, is the book that he enjoyed much um, because it spells out so much of of grace of God's grace and what he has done for us and and where um, you know the miracles that Christ performed and just just all that in John and so we move on today and last week we left off we were just going to start in chapter 12 chapter 12 of John and and we just discussed with uh, with Mary and Martha and Lazarus and how the Pharisees are really gaining um, or trying to gain evidence to put him to death but we know that Christ said, I only laid down my life in my time. And we know that it isn't Christ's time yet. And he keeps eluding the Pharisees and the Jews that want to put him to death. So we'll move on to chapter 12. <coughs> Excuse me. Chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Then Jesus... Six days before the Passover 
came to Beth, uh, Bethany. And remember, they are going all up to Bethlehem or Bethany for the Passover. And the Pharisees and the Jews at the time said, he don't dare show his face here. And they put out that if anyone was to see him, that we would take him captive. So we move on into uh, verse 1. It says, Then Jesus, uh, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which, ha uh, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There he made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. You know, after he'd passed, Christ called him from the tomb, and there they were in, in Mary and Martha and Lazarus' home, and they were to eat. And verse 3, it says, Then Mary took uh, a pound of ointment of uh, spikenard, a very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of, odor of ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? And, and, and you can see... You can see Judas' mind even here. Why wasn't this sold? Why is it used? It should have been sold and then the money given unto the poor. That is what the Jewish um, law was. Verse 6, it says, Then he said, Not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put in there. He was basically the treasurer of the disciples and he was a money person. And he was like, why didn't you sell this and give us the money so that we may travel more? In verse 7 it says, Then, Jesus, or then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burying hath she kept this. For the poor always have with you, but me ye have not always. And she was doing this act of washing his feet, and, and she probably used an abundance of this uh, spike knot. So it, the aroma filled the house with good pleasure. And if you remember the Jewish law with sacrifice, they are to burn so that this um, odor, this perfume raises to heaven so God may smell it. And, and you can see Judas going back into the, into the Jewish way asked him, you know, why didn't you give it unto or sell it so the money could go to the poor, but which he really wanted it in his pocket, but yet they could be, it could be used in a ceremony for sacrifice to the Lord. And Christ steps in and he said, leave her alone because the poor will always have you to fend for them. But she will not always have me. And he knew what was coming down the road. Christ knew what was coming down the road. So we move on to verse 9. It says, Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but they, that they might see Lazarus also whom he had raised from the dead. <clears throat> so it's 
So as any spectacle, I mean, you hear it nowadays even, um, look at the people that run to what they think is miracles now. You know, the image of Christ burnt in a piece of toast or things around the world that, oh, it could only be a miracle. People gather to see or gather to touch, and that's what these people are. But they, there is some there that knew who Christ was, but they wanted to make sure that it wasn't a hoax. They knew Lazarus had died, but they needed to see it for their own eyes, that he was alive. In verse 10 it says, But the chief priest, consulting that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. You know, they, they, he was raised from the dead. They had the Jewish ceremony and the Jewish people, uh, the high chiefs and the priests, there's like, listen, if he is to walk and people see that Lazarus was brought back from the dead, then they will know who Jesus is. But in their mind, they're trying to turn it that Christ is not of God. That he is of the devil. But again, it comes to pride. We need to take out the evidence who is Lazarus. We take out Lazarus, we take out Christ, we take out Jesus. But people hearing this said, no, no, this is truly Christ the Savior we've been told about. And they wanted nothing to do with it, so they left. So the mob mentality wouldn't grow. And it says because that by this reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Verse 12, it says, On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, and now we're into the Passover, that come to the feast, when they'd heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of the palm tree and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. So it got out that he was coming. And, and, and that's what they did for kings. That even that no foot should touch dirt. And that's why the palms were spread on the ground. It's almost the same adip, a, a adaptation that we do nowadays when you hear of the red carpet. When people walk the red carpet, this is the carpet that they laid for Christ. And they only do it for kings. And they sing out, Hosanna! Blessed is the king of Israel. And they knew that. They knew that Christ is the king. Not only of Israel, but of men. <clears throat> Verse 14, it says, And Jesus, when he found a young ass, sat thereon, as it is written. Now you remember John wrote his books, his book after Matthew and Mark and Luke. And that's what he's saying. But not only that, if you go back into the Old Testament, it tells of Christ riding into Jerusalem. And they don't really name Jerusalem, but they say... They, that the Savior will ride upon an ass into, into this place. And people will give alms to him. And 
as it is written. 15, it says, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. And that is from the Old Testament. Verse 16, it says, These things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, they remembered they that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. 17, the people therefore that was with him when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. And they were along with him, and those that seen it, you remember when, when Mary ran, there was a uh, uh, contingent of, of Jewish people that went with her, and when they got to the grave, the stone was rolled aside, and Christ said, Lazarus, come forth. And these are the people that seen him, and they were moving along with the crowd and telling of, yes, this is the man. This is the man that brought Lazarus back from the dead. In 18 it says, For this cause the people also met him, for that they had heard that he had done this miracle. Isn't it something that, that all they wanted to do was go and see the man that performed the miracle of bringing Lazarus back from the dead? I'm sure there was hope there that whatever ailments they had, that he would cure. But he had given the ultimate, he'd given the ultimate um, example of Christ and who he was. Because he had brought Lazarus back from the dead. And that's what he does for us. He pays for our sin on the cross. His death, his burial, his resurrection brings us back from the dead. We are sinners. Before we believe, we are sinners. And we will die a sinner if we don't believe. We are dead. We are dead in Christ. Once we believe, we die with Christ on the cross because our sins were paid for. And at that point in time, He has saved us from death. And what a perfect example. Because once we believe in Christ as Lazarus did, he calls us, come from the grave. And we do. We are saved eternal for all eternity. We have everlasting life with God and Christ. Only from the belief of what Christ did on the cross. And it says there, the Son of Man to be glorified is the heading in my Bible. Verse 19, it says, The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing. Behold, the world is gone after him. They're at this point getting very nervous. Because in the city that was to have the Passover, here comes Christ on an ass, and people are laying a carpet in front of him, calling him the king of Israel. And they are saying, uh oh, our job just got harder. <clears throat> and verse 20, it says, 
And there were certain Greeks among them that came to worship at the feast. Now isn't that something that, that there were um, non-Jewish people there? But they'd heard of Christ and what he'd done. Here's John. And they wanted to be there. They wanted to understand who he was. So here are a few Gentiles that are there amongst the Jewish people. And then in verse 21 it says, The same game therefore Philip, which uh, was of uh, Bathsheba and of Galilee, and desired him saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip, Philip cometh and telleth Andrew. And again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. He, 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 they came forth and they, they heard of, you know, I'm sure they've heard of all the, all the preaching of the Jewish people. And they've heard now of all the miracles that he has done. And now they're trying to understand, is this the person? And they come unto him and said, you know, we want to understand you. We understand that you are the Savior that the Jewish people keep talking of. In verse 23, and it says, it says there, uh, and Jesus answered them, you know, Philip and Andrew went up to Christ and just said, we are here. We are not of the Jewish, we're not of the Jewish nation, but we are here. We are here to understand. And then Christ says to him, the hour is come that the son of man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall onto the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, uh, it bringeth forth much fruit. <clears throat> he is now coming to the point where he said, okay, now is the time that I am glorified to glorify God. He's stepping forth and saying, now my real reason for being here will start. Up to this point, he was showing who he was. Now people are starting to understand really who he was. And now he is stepping forth and saying, my time has come. And it's time to glorify not only I, but God, who I am of. 25, it says, He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. And that basically is his predecessor to, listen, if you love the world and you love the fleshly way, you have no peace in my world. But if you hate what the world is, you hate the fleshly way, which is meaning you enjoy what God has given unto you, you are with Christ, you understand who Christ is, you do as Christ says, then you will not die. You will have eternal life. And verse 20, uh, verse 26, it says, If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now, th this is way back, and Christ is walking the earth. 
and tell me this is not a living Bible when right there is a verse that talks unto us. This is not only a verse for them right there at that moment, but it's a verse for us. And it says this whole area that Christ is talking here, but 26 for sure. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. And the greatest service to God is the gospel. One, believing it and being saved, and two, giving it. That's their work. That's your service. 27, it says, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause I came unto this hour. He said, you know, many times the Jewish people were trying to get there, the priests and the Pharisees were trying to get their hands on him, but he escaped them. And he said, this is not the hour. But now he is saying, this is the start of the hour. This is where I start to glorify not only me, but my Father who sent me. He is announcing that he is going to ramp it up. What he is here for, in layman's term, he is ramping up his glory for God and why he is here. Verse 28, it says, Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came, out, uh, came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out, and I, if I lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And, and there's a lot there, a lot to unpack there. You know, a lot of people said, well, there's the battle that, that between the devil and Christ, but it wasn't. This is the point in time that he is setting himself up to go on Calvary's tree, that he may die for our sins, and that's why he says, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And he's talking of the devil. And he's not talking about casting him out of the world or ta casting him into the lake of the fire. He's talking about casting him out of believers. That the devil will have no reign over you. Once you believe what Christ has done on the cross, the devil will not have reign over you. He will tempt you. He will tear you down. He will even tear you apart. But he has no reign over your life. Because all in all, once you believe what Christ did on the cross, your soul is God's. And God will protect his children. And, it, and, and he gives the whole, he gives the gospel. 
Because it says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. All that will believe. Once Christ ascends into heaven, those that will believe will go unto him. As we know right now, Pastor Tom is about to follow Christ to heaven. And this is why he sang. When I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Verse 33, this he said, signifying what death he should die. And that's, he's finally coming to the point that I will die for your sins. I will pay for your sins. 34, it says, The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou? The Son of Man must be lifted up. Who is the Son of Man? And remember, the Son of Man may, um, must be lifted up. There's quite a few points to that. He was lifted up on the cross. He was lifted up for our sin. And then, finally, he ascended into heaven. He was lifted up to overcome death. That we may all who believe in Christ overcome death. <clears throat> Verse 35, it says, Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth, where he goeth. And he was talking to those just right there. He said, walk in my light. Understand who I am. But he that pushes against me walks in darkness. Verse 36, it says, While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus, and departed, and did hide himself from them. Again, he removed himself so they could not lay hands on him. But what a, what a saying is there. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. And that's what we are. We are the children of light. Someone from that point in time, follow me with this, someone from that point in time that believed what Christ did on the cross has passed that light on to generation to generation to generation that has come to us. It's a candle that never blows out. The gospel is a candle that never blows out. It has been passed on from generation to generation to generation to generation to us. We as believers carry that light. And we are to pass that light on generations to come. That is the gospel. Until the day that Christ comes back, or we are with Christ in heaven, that light will be carried on on this earth. Once that light is removed from earth, that's when we go into the tribulation. But we are 
carriers of that light. That light that was lit when Christ died on the cross. We carry it on. And we are to pass it on to generations. And that is what also was told in the Old Testament. That it may move forward. And with that, we will close for this week. Sorry, I write this down. So I know where we are next week. <clears throat> Sorry. But anyways, with that, we move on, and, and it is um, next week. I think we have two more weeks before Christmas, two more Sundays before Christmas. Um, next week, we will keep following up in John, and then Christmas service, probably Christmas Eve morn, 24th. We will um, have a Christmas um, message. And then we'll get back into John. Um, but with that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for what you've given unto us. The needs that you provide. The main need that we need. That all need. That is Christ, your Son bear our sins on the cross that all are paid for and his righteousness is put upon us we thank you for that Lord and as we go through this next week Lord just be with the family be with the family of Tom because this is his family this church is a family and if it be your will this week, Lord, receive him unto you. We thank you, Lord, that you brought such a prominent man to give your word here. We thank you, Lord, with what he has given unto us was our needs. He fulfilled our needs as Christ fulfilled all of our needs. As we go through this week, Lord, please put us in the path of someone that is searching for your truth, that we may give them the gospel and they may hear your true word and provide all the needs unto all of us until we meet back here again next week. In Christ's name we pray, amen. <clears throat> the verse for the week that I've brought forth um, is in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. And it says there, and it's Christ that spoke this, um, in verse uh, 9 it says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And I bring that forth today because grace was one of Tom's favorite things. He loved to talk about grace. So I brought that verse forward for all of us this week. So thank you and have a very good week.